So my name is uh, Peter Nestrov and I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Skylight. And on behalf of Skylight, it is my privilege and uh, my pleasure to welcome all of you here today. It is a very special day and an emotional day for Skylight as we celebrate our fifth anniversary. And five years may not seem as a long time, but actually in the lifetime of a startup, it's actually quite a lot. And in these five years, uh, we have achieved significant traction and we have pioneered the use of single cell data for clinical discovery. And we've done a number of projects in oncology and also in women's health, where by combining single cell data and machine learning, we have actually made discoveries that are now on track to clinical applications. And what better way to celebrate our fifth anniversary than hosting a unique event that brings together hundreds of, pay of people that share the same passion. And this is the passion that we have to help patients by turning scientific breakthroughs into clinical applications. And the topic of today's um, symposium is machine learning meets multi-omics for precision medicine. Now to set the stage, I'm going to explain how we at Skylight see the combination of these three things together and how we actually see the future of healthcare. Precision medicine in very simple terms means giving the right treatment to the right patient. And it is a easy <laughs> sentence to say and to imagine, but actually that's quite a challenge in healthcare because giving the right treatment to the right patient means that you know who is the right patient for the right treatment. And this is the question uh, that is still unsolved. Which patients respond to which treatment? And why do some patients that have the same disease and receive the same treatment respond in a different way? And this is still something that we're uh, facing as a challenge today, and this remains to be solved. Uh, and actually, the reason for not being able to do this is the complexity of biology and our lacking understanding of, the, of mechanisms of disease, especially in complex diseases, as well as the lacking understanding of how certain treatments work. In other words, biology is actually more than the sum of our genes, and this really requires understanding biology of disease at multiple levels. But let me also give an example um, of one precision medicine treatment that is actually successful and very powerful to cure patients. Uh, and this is also one focus area of Skylight where we look into cell therapies and in particular CAR T cell therapies, which are very, uh, can be very effective. And I'll give the example now, but also have the challenge that they don't work in every patient. So CAR T cell therapies are actually a living drug. So they're real T cells, immune cells that have been genetically engineered and put back in the patient to fight the cancer cells. And in the successful cases, they will actually kill the cancer cells and also remain in the body as centuries to prevent uh, recurrence of these uh, cancer cells. And uh, just to also put these things in perspective, so CAR T cells have, the work on developing CAR T cells has started in the early 90s and actually took a lot of effort and 20 years to bring the first CAR T cell therapies to the patients. So the breakthrough came when Carl June and his team, in 2012, they delivered the first CAR T cell treatment to a pediatric patient. And despite a lot of setbacks and challenges uh, with this patient, and they, they experienced all the side effects that, that were possible, but they managed to, to rescue and save the patient, this patient has been actually cured. So that's uh, Emily Whitehead, the first um, pediatric patient that received the CAR T cell treatment. And she's uh, this year turning 17, cancer free, and yeah, the CAR T cell cells are still in her body. And this is an example of a successful um, treatment which was really personalized and targeted to, to the disease of this patient. But the truth is that immune therapies, which cell therapies are part of, they only work in about 20% of patients. So what do we do about the remaining 80%? How do we choose the right treatment for them? And that's where multi-omics comes in play. So multi-omics is, um, a combination or actually an integration of different data types and different molecular data types that can describe uh, a given biological sample. And today, over the, or over the past 20 years, the technology has advanced significantly. So today we're able actually to measure DNA, RNA and protein from the same patient sample simultaneously. And we can even go at the level of individual cells. And when I referred in the beginning to single cell data, this is what single cell data means. It's really high density molecular data on the level of individual cells from a certain patient sample. And this gives you a resolution not only on the molecular level, but also on the cell type level. So we can understand really how tissues are composed, what cell types make these tissues. And 
the technology is there. The data is also there, or actually the, the multi-omics data is increasing exponentially over the past year. So there is more and more data being generated. And also here to give one example, uh, one of the flagship initiatives in multi-omics is the Human Cell Atlas. And this is an initiative that has been started in 2016 by Aviv Regev at this time at the MIT and Sarah Teichman at the Wellcome Sanger Institute in the UK. And they set out a very ambitious goal. So the goal of the Human Cell Atlas is to map every cell type in the human body and describe it molecularly. So to have the molecular profiles of all the different cell types in health and disease in the human. Now you can imagine that this is a massive initiative, much, much bigger than the Human Genome Project, uh, which also took quite some years and efforts. And to make this work, uh, Aviv and Sarah has set up a huge consortium. So there are more than 1,000 organizations participating in the Human Cell Atlas from more than 80 countries. They've already generated some initial data sets and the generation of more data is ongoing. And again, here we're speaking also about multi-omics data, so single cell data on the RNA, DNA and protein level. And now we have the data, so the, the possibility to gain these insights is there. But what is um, preventing us to, to progress further and actually make precision medicine happen? And this is the next challenge that we need to solve, and that's the complexity of this multi-omics data. I already mentioned the scale, so it's really immense amounts of data and also very complex. And the insights are in there, we know this, but actually getting to the insights is very challenging, it's very time consuming, and it requires advanced computational tools that are tailored to do the job. And this is also where machine learning comes in play. So using machine learning on multi-omics data has the possibility to unlock the insights that are in the multi-omics data and then enable clinical applications which will enable precision medicine. And machine learning, uh, many of you probably know it from uh, face recognition apps. So that's the most famous example of uh, applying machine learning, for example, for pattern recognition on images. So every one of us is using something, some app that is based on, on machine learning or algorithms that have been trained. And using this on images, that's common. And this is also done in a clinical setting. So today, or I checked yesterday, there are a few hundred uh, medical devices approved by the FDA that are using machine learning algorithms. So this is already widely used, um, for example, in uh, radiology, uh, in ultrasound, and yeah, mainly in different uh, imaging-based uh, techniques. But then the next frontier is actually applying machine learning to multi-omics, which is still a discovery approach, and turning these insights into clinical applications. And this is what we're going to talk about today. And we have invited an amazing set of speakers and panelists to discuss this application of multi-omics and machine learning in a clinical context. And also this is what Skylet has been doing in the past five years and what we look to, to achieve in the next um, couple of years. So here, um, yeah, I would conclude my opening remarks and really encourage all of you, be curious, ask questions. So we have actually designed this event to be very interactive so that you can ask questions, you can interact with the speakers, with each other, and most importantly, get inspired to change the world together with us.